So, good morning and welcome to the Theatre of Epidavros here in Greece. You can see it's extremely busy and this is actually pretty local to me. I live quite close to here, but I've avoided doing a video here because the whole place is dominated naturally by the theatre, which is why people come here. But the theatre is here for a reason and we are in the middle of nowhere. We're 15 kilometres from Epidavros itself. So I hope to answer in this video what this place was about and why the theatre is actually here. And look at some of the other things that perhaps get a little bit ignored because of the magnificence of what is behind me. But let's have a look round and hopefully you'll enjoy the video. So here I am in Epithavros. I'm about to buy a ticket and you can see it's enormously busy, hugely busy. Um, lots of school trips, but also lots of tourists here. So I'm not sure how long it's going to take me to get a ticket. We'll find out in a minute. So I've got a ticket, I'm through the ticket gates. That wasn't actually too bad. You just ignore the huge crush of people. They're all in groups and you go straight to the ticket desk. It took me about one minute, but you can see busy today. Busy, busy, busy. So let's have a look around. So move beyond the theater, which is what everyone comes to Epithavros to see. And you have a very complex archeological site, but why was the site and the theater here? Well, it's ultimately down to this building in front of me now, which was a temple. Think of the Parthenon in Athens with its big columns rising up, this Doric columns, and a roof and a central uh, space. That's what this building was. And this is a temple to Asclepios. Asclepios was the Greek god of healing. And that is what this place was. This place was a site of healing for the ancient Greeks. And this temple of Asclepios here was built in about 375 BC. But under the Tholos, which is surrounded by scaffolding over here, you have a building which was recently discovered in 2020. And that building dates to about the 6th century BC. So it demonstrates that from about the 6th century BC through to its demise in about 395 AD, this site was a cult to Asclepios and a center where the Greeks came to be healed. And everything that we see here, including the theater, ultimately comes from the fact that people were coming here to be Now I thought rather than walk around each building in turn explaining its purpose, I'd actually try and take us on a little journey and pretend that we were an ill pilgrim coming here in let's say 300 BC. And what sort of journey would we be taking on? through this place. When you arrived here, assuming that you were well enough to, you would probably be brought straight here to the altar of Asclepios, which is actually set slightly away from the temple over there. And here you would make an offering, an initial offering to Asclepios, the god of healing, obviously hoping that your prayers would be heard very early on and your ailments, whatever they may be, uh, would be healed by the god who would take pity on you. And then having done that, you would want to go and find your lodgings because you wouldn't come here for a day. You'd come here for several days, even weeks to be healed. And as this site became more and more popular, it naturally became better and better invested and more and more occurred here because ultimately, whilst this was a site of healing, it was also a commercial venture for the Greeks. So having arrived at Epithavros and perhaps made your initial offering to Asclepios, the god of healing, you needed to stay somewhere. And fortunately, this being effectively a spa resort, they provided you with a hotel, or as it was known in those days, a katagogion. And this, where I am now, all of this was a hotel. There were about 160 rooms here, and that would make it a large hotel even by today's standards. And this is where, if you could afford to, you came and you stayed during your healing process at this spa at this Greek Hellenic spa. And that's what it was essentially. It was a cult, it started as a cult. But here we have a large hotel set slightly away from the main site where you would go every day to pray, to be massaged, to bath and to heal. But it was a spa town. And so having made your offering, checked into your hotel, you come down to the Asclepion. And the Asclepion here, which is a mixture of Greek and Roman architecture, I have to say, was effectively the activity centre of the whole site. This is where you came to be healed. This is where you came to pay your money for different activities. And that's exactly what it was. It was a spa retreat where you came in the hope that the god Asclepion would grant you good health and recovery from whatever ailment drew you here in the first place. And 
the whole place has a history from about 600 BC as I said through to 300 BC when it really started to grow and here we see what are known typically as the Greek baths because these were constructed about 300 BC and of course bathing, bathing was an important part of the health ritual here. You bathed, you massaged, you prayed, and all of these things may or may not have made you better. You can see here water flowing in or a channel for the water, and the water came from a cistern up on the hill and flowed down onto this site. So this site would have been full of water, and in the summer when it's hot here, it would have been fantastic to bathe, I'm certain. You can see here various baths and so on, there are also some Roman baths over the other side. So across the Asclepion from what are known as the Greek baths, you have this site here, the Roman baths, which were far more impressive actually. And they were originally Greek baths. They were constructed in the third century. They're contemporary with the Greek baths, but then they were rebuilt in the second century AD for the visit of Emperor Hadrian to this site. And you can see the Roman um, construction here. This is typical Roman construction and these would have been absolutely magnificent and I would think that Hadrian probably came in here and took a bath. I mean we have mosaic floors here that I've just stepped on. No one seems to notice. It's just a marvel and it would have been fantastic I suspect here. Nothing like it is now. On the left here in front of me where this gentleman's going up, we have a couple of ornamental fountains and they would have been fountains. Water would have been spraying everywhere in a controlled fashion because we're close enough here to the water supply, the system, to provide a pressure. So you have ornamental fountains, you have these Roman rebuilt baths for the visit of Emperor Hadrian, and then you have channels of water flowing down and across the site. Water was incredibly important here, as it would be nowadays. Hygiene, washing away your sins, cleanliness. It would have been absolutely magnificent here. And it was a spa. So there was actually a third bathhouse here. Here, the Baths of Asclepion, right next to where we started, essentially, the Temple of Asclepion. And these would have been incredibly important sacred baths, I suspect, in your healing process. You would have come here, having been to the temple, to wash away as Asclepian did, your sins and the dirt of your travels before you entered what was essentially the healing building of a hospital. So with this building, this abaton, this hospital, this healing building, we're really getting to the centre of this site now in its pagan beliefs at the very least. And this was constructed in two phases, in the early and late 4th centuries BC. And this was the building that you went to be healed. And the rituals that we're undertaking here are rather a mystery, but you came here to be healed. And I guess if you had the money and you spent time here, in your hotel that we've already seen, um, and in the baths, you probably came here almost daily to be healed. Um, I guess it would depend on your ailment and what they knew about it. But it's a magnificent building. It's obviously been restored a little bit. You can see that the Greeks are very good at demonstrating or showing the stones that they've replaced. But it's right at the heart of the site. And there's only really one more building here beyond the theatre that I'm interested in. And it's the most enigmatic one here and probably the most difficult to show and explain because no one really understands totally what it was. So here in front of us, we have the Tholos. And this is an en enigmatic building. Unfortunately, we can't go in because a lot of the Tholos was actually underground um, below the level that we can see here. There were three circular chambers, a little bit like a maze, and you progressed through each circular chamber to the center of the Tholos. And you'll also note that it's round. And in Greece, round buildings were extremely unusual, um, highly unusual. And no one's really sure what it was for. There was definitely an altar to Asclepilos at the center. My personal theory, and I have no qualification, I should say, I have no knowledge other than that of walking around Greece and looking at round buildings, is that it was essentially where you came as a last resort to die, or if you were going to die, because the Tholos being a round building reminds me of the Mycenaean tombs, which were also round in nature and also underground. And I don't know if I'm right or wrong, I'm sure. A lot of people who study this will tell me I'm completely wrong, but it just seems to me enigmatic of the Mycenaean tombs. I'm sure as we walk around, you keep catching glimpses of these pillars here, which are obviously largely recreated. But this was the Greek historium or banqueting hall. So when you came here and you'd given your offerings and you checked into the hotel, 
and perhaps you'd had a few healing processes, you would come back with here and socialise with your friends. And next to it, we have this area here, which was effectively a temple to the Egyptian gods. And it illustrates that Epithavros was not just somewhere for the Greeks, it was somewhere for the entire Greek and Roman world. And people would make pilgrimages here. Come here as you do go to Greece now. You can see everywhere you go on this site there are water channels because water was absolutely everywhere and critical to this place. 500 years after the Greeks built the Hestatorium here, the Romans came along and in the columned courtyard of the building they built this Roman Odeon or indoor theatre and you can see it's fascinating. The columns that were originally within the Hestatorium here built into the actual walls of the Odeon itself. It's amazing. The building itself is inconsequential really here. It's important for the history because Hadrian came and it was probably built for him. But this ultimately was about the healing. So how do we go from this large Asclepion here, a centre of healing as we've seen, to the theatre of Epithavros? Well actually before we get to the theatre of Epithavros we have to look at the stadium of Epithavros which is maybe not as famous. Along with the health centre, in the 5th century, the Greeks created here a stadium and they used to hold games here, new games every four years, where the best athletes in Greece would come and demonstrate their abilities. And they were common across Greece. You had Olympia, obviously the Olympic Games now, you had Nemea, and sport and health go very well together. So it was a very natural synergy. And the stone steps here, the stone tiered seating, was not actually added to the 4th century and that demonstrates absolutely that in the fourth century the site here really went through its zenith its creation as we see it now and it was then that money flowed in and we saw a development of a, a leisure complex here beyond most other sites in greece and subsequent to the creation of this stadium and let's face it sports and health go hand in hand so it's hardly surprising there was a celebration of sport and the human body here in the stadium they built the theater of epithelos because sport and arts also go together this brings us back to where we started really the theater as we've seen in the fourth century there was a vibrant spa and health center here inspired by devotion to the greek god asclepios and we have the Asclepion and we have the stadium. What was missing was a theatre, a place where they could celebrate the arts. So at the end of the fourth century they built this theatre here at Epithavos and because of its acoustic qualities and because of its high degree of preservation it's been granted UNESCO World Heritage Site status. Now until 1881 there was really nothing here, there was just a hillside um, in the rough shape of the theatre and in 1881 they started to excavate here and uncovered I mean I assume they knew it was here but no one had bothered previously uncovered this theatre it holds about 14,000 people it's by no means the biggest theatre in Greece Argos for example 30 kilometres down the road completed around the same time around 350 BC held 20,000 but it's the most complete and one of the most acoustically perfect theatres here in Greece and it's used to this day. So in 1938 they held here the first modern retelling of a Greek tragedy in the theatre of Epithavros and then there was a break for the war but in 1955 the Greeks established the Epithavros festival which runs to this day and this year from the 7th of July to the 26th of August there is a festival here of Greek tragedies, modern Greek plays and global plays, but it focuses on Greece, obviously, and it is world renowned. You buy your tickets and you see world renowned Greek and global play actors come here and talk. And they talk without a microphone because the acoustics here are so good you don't need them. I can hear very clearly what people are whispering down there although it's a jumble because they're all talking together and it is i have to say a fantastic place so i hope you've enjoyed my little video on epithavros it's probably longer than i intended because there's so much here but 
essentially what we have is a site of ancient healing dating from the 6th century BC through to its heyday as a Greek Hellenic site in 400 BC and then being destroyed roughly around the time of Christ before the Romans rebuilt it for the visit of Hadrian. And we have an amazing theatre here, an amazing site. If you do come here, obviously you come for the theatre, but for God's sake, get out and look at the archaeological site as well, because the theatre is here due to that. And I think so many people who come here miss that. But please subscribe, watch some of my other videos, and I hope I'll see you again soon. Thank you.